Pinky's lost the plot. <laughs> it kind of reminds you of current times in a way. Um, but yeah, he gave this really, really amazing speech that inspired everyone. And even NASA weren't quite sure that they were going to be doing this until he gave this speech. And they were like, okay, we better, better get started with them. Um, but it was great. And he, you know, he rallied the whole country. Now, unfortunately, so the Russian leader at the time, Khrushchev, he was also thinking about going to the to the moon obviously as well now kennedy had approached him and said let's work together let's do a joint mission and he was a bit skeptical at what kennedy really wanted kennedy was quite new he wasn't really sure about him um, and then it was two or so years later that he started considering a joint mission and thought you know what this might be more cost effective it might be quite a good thing to do now, unfortunately, we know the story in that um, it was around that time that Kennedy, oh, I'm frozen, that I'll just carry on talking, that Kennedy was um, assassinated. And so those plans kind of fell through, really. Um, and they did rename um, Cape Canaveral in his, in his honour as well. So it became Cape Kennedy. So the joint mission was now off the cards, which was a bit sad for everyone. Uh, and Khrushchev at the same time, he left his position of power. So you had these two new powers coming in who obviously didn't want to work together. Um, and even though Khrushchev had said, we're not going to do this mission because we want to put our people in Russia first and look after the people on the ground, um, it kind of fell through. Now, one of the things that I like to mention that Kennedy did was the, the political situation at the time in America wasn't very good for, for black people. Um, and he'd made this very bold statement that he wanted a, in his own words, he wanted a coloured astronaut. So as much as the officials hated this, they found Kennedy a coloured astronaut because that is what he'd asked for. Uh, now, he had a really promising career. So this was Ed Dwight. So not, not to be confused with Ed White, who I'll talk about in a minute. Uh, now, Ed White was the first black astronaut, very, very promising career, really, really great um, Air Force pilot. Uh, now, Kennedy got assassinated, and of course, the next thing to do was to throw this guy away because it was Kennedy's dream, no one else's. No one else was up to that, up to those times um, at the time. Now, the three Americans, all of the tests had happened, those three Americans were chosen to go to the moon. So you'll probably probably know these three. Uh, so you had you had Ed White, so not Ed Dwight. Uh, and there was quite a mix up in fan mail uh, where he got lots of fan mail for the other Ed, oh. saying like, oh, it's so great that you're a black astronaut, <laughs> so inspiring. And so they were continuously going to each other's hands saying, I think this is for you, here's a bag of, of mail for you. Uh, so you had Gus, Gus Grissom, uh, and Roger Chaffee as well. So they were the three that were going to go up in Apollo 1, this amazing mission to go to the moon. Now, fortunately, 1967, again, a, a lot of you will know the story, uh, there was a fire inside the capsule and the pressure was so much that they couldn't pull the door open to get out. And so within seconds, they, they or within minutes maybe, they perished. Um, which was sad for everyone. And they never really knew what the cause was. They thought it was frayed wires. There's a lot of other things, um, stories out there saying what they thought it was. Uh, but this kind of made everyone pay attention a bit more. And they decided that they were gonna slow down this race. Now, not a lot of people know, but the Soviets also had a similar situation happen with their astronauts. So a fire killed their astronauts as well. And they had, well, they swept it under the rug. Um, and so not many people knew that at the time and came out much later. But this was a turning point for NASA, and I mention this because I know it's sad, but this was a turning point for NASA because it made sure that every mission since has been super, super safe and safety has been the main priority. You know, if you speak to anyone from NASA now, they'll tell you that that is their main priority, is, is the safety of the people that they're sending off. So everyone was ready to go to the moon after they'd made these changes in their safety regulations. <laughs> Um, but the first things that actually circled the moon were two tortoises. So these were launched on Zond 5 on the 14th of September uh, 1968, again by the Soviet Union. And the capsule was successfully recovered by sea a week later. And the tortoises hadn't, they, they just suffered a little bit of weight loss. So I <laughs> had, had measured these tortoise, tortoises. 
Um, and that was the only thing that had happened, but they did survive, which is great. Yeah. So why did they choose the, like, I can understand a monkey, I suppose, and maybe a dog, but why a tortoise? I, I yeah. do not know. I don't know. Okay. That's maybe something you can do for your homework, is have yeah. a look at <laughs> why they chose tortoises, because I don't know. I think they were just probably going for something just a bit different. They would, <laughs> like, they'd, they'd, not, they'd sent up, like, they'd sent up all kinds of stuff, jellyfish, they'd sent really? up, like, yeah, like, cats, rabbits. Um, rats, they sent up loads of different animals by this point. 32 different animals, I think, before they decided to send the tortoises to the moon. Um, <laughs> so yeah, so we, so everyone was ready. These had circled the moon and come back, so that was great. They knew the mission was going to work. Um, and so the first human mission to the moon was Apollo 8. So Apollo 8 went, it circled, and it came back. Um, again, nothing had prepared the astronauts they'd done all of this training and nothing had prepared them for what it actually felt like in the rocket taken off and so they were shook around violently by the saturn V, one of the most powerful rockets that have been made um and i think that made for quite a funny story afterwards when i got back and they were, imagine being in that rocket and being shook around violently and having no idea if this was the right thing or not if something, <laughs> something's going right you can't see outside or anything um and so Apollo 8 happened, and then of course Apollo 10 happened, which was, we definitely knew everything was gonna work by then. Everything was tested <clears> except for getting out and stepping and, and being on the moon. So we were ready for Apollo 11. So Apollo 11 was go for launch. It was launched on a Saturn V rocket from Kennedy Space Center on Merritt Island on July the 16th. And so you probably, if you haven't been living under a rock in this summer, you'll have seen lots of Apollo things happen around these dates, um, especially in London as well. Uh, so it was the fifth crewed mission of the Apollo program. Um, and it took, and now I'm here. Um, the, the, the lunar module was named Eagle after the mission patch design. So you'll have seen the mission patch with, with the Eagle on. I'll show you again later. Um, and then the, um, the command module that Collins was in, so there's three astronauts that went up, and Collins was one who stayed in the command module that circled the moon. Um, and that was named after, um, named Columbia, after Columbiad, which was the giant cannon used to launch um, a spacecraft in Jules Verne's novel um, from the Earth to the Moon. As I say, that's the link that we had with the, with the um, science fiction. Now, going to the moon, you will be quite worried about your safety, right? No one's ever stepped on the moon before. Uh, so no one really knows what to expect. But astronauts didn't really have any sort of life insurance back then. It's kind of, you just signed the waiver and you're gone. Um, and so people were worried, like, if they get off onto the moon, will something happen to them in their suits? Will, will they be able to come back? Um, and so the, the astronauts were quite crafty, really, and I don't know how legal this was to do. Um, but they created these little cards and so they were postmarked on the day of launch so you can see that in the middle um, July 16th so they were postmarked on that day and they were signed by all three astronauts uh, so Neil, Buzz and Collins had signed them and they posted them to their friends and their family and the people that they loved so that if something did happen to them in space they could sell, it, sell these for money and it was <laughs> essentially be their life insurance <laughs> so it's a very clever idea I don't know how much NASA knew about it at the time um, but, but there you go so there's a few of them still, still knocking about now the Russians at this point they People had kind of forgotten about what was going on because it was Apollo, Apollo, Apollo on everyone's TV, everyone was loving it. Now, the Apollo mission took quite a while to get to the moon. So on its way, um, it was Jodrell Bank. So this was our kind of UK. We had a bit more of a contribution, but this is probably the main one that we recognised for. Uh, so Jodrell Bank in Cheshire, um, they spotted a signal coming from this Luna 15 spacecraft. Now, what the Russians have done, again, because America likes to tell everyone what it's doing before it does it, <laughs> Russia, or the Soviet Union, had made their own kind of little um, spacecraft that was going to fly to the moon. It was going to land. It was going to sweep up some space, some, some moon dust. It was going to put it into its container and it's going to fly back. So they would have a piece of the moon before the Americans got back without having to send any people. So that was their plan, was to get those lunar samples back. So this was kind of bypassing the Apollo module in space 
and George Orbank picked it up and was like, what's going on here? So they monitored it. Um, fortunately for the Americans, it crashed. It crash landed, so it wasn't going to be coming back with those lunar samples. And it was George Orbank that picked that, followed that whole um, tracking and, and told everyone that it's crashed. So the Americans, again, luckily for them, uh, were ahead. And did they know what it was at the time, or did they just think it was some other weird thing going on? Did they know the Russians were doing this project? Um, good question. I think they, they knew about it, but they knew really late. Okay. So potentially when they were only just launching themselves or, okay. or very near to it. Um, but yeah, but I'd, ha I'd, have to, I'd have to double check. I think there will have been people who definitely knew and people who didn't have a clue about it. I think the rest of the world with the hype of Apollo probably had no idea that, that yeah, Luna 15 was going on. Um, and then it happened. So after 102 hours, 45 minutes and 43 seconds, they landed on the moon. So this was the tranquility base here, the eagle has landed, that fam famous quote from the video. Um, and it was all over the news everywhere, and I'm a bit biased here because I, I found this copy of the Liverpool <laughs> Echo, and I was like, that's really cool, that even in, like, in Liverpool, it was, it was in the papers everywhere, um, which, was, which was fantastic. And, and of course, a lot of you will have heard that, or seen that Neil had to take over manual control, and they overshot the landing site. And they only had 17 seconds or thereabouts of fuel left to get from there. Now, a lot of people always ask, like, well, if they only had 17 seconds left of fuel, how did they get back off the moon later on? So they, this was in two separate tanks. So they had the landing tank, essentially, and then the taken off again tank. So there's no way they could use any of that tank. This was their maximum for landing. And so the landing was nearly aborted. Uh, but Neil took over and was like, no, we've got this close. We had to do the same um, with Apollo 10. Apollo 10 got here but didn't quite land. We're not going to do that. Um, and so they landed. And six and a half hours after they landed, so they were in the spacecraft this whole time, then they were allowed to get out. So it was six and a half hours, they were meant to go to sleep and rest. And then they were like, I don't think anyone slept. Like, could you really sleep if you're on the moon? Um, and Neil, a funny story is that apparently he didn't know what he was going to say or he didn't tell anyone what's first words were going to be on the moon. And there was obviously a lot of pressure on them. And at one point they thought he was going to be talking about cheese because it was his hometown. There was like a big cheese factory or a big cheese industry. His hometown, <laughs> fish is cheese it was. Um, and so they thought it might be that. And so everyone was speculating what it would be. Um, and apparently he hesitates here off the last step because his grandmother has said to him, Neil, when you get to that moon, if it looks unsafe, don't you step off that ladder. <laughs> <laughs> and apparently he had to promise to his to his grandmother that he wasn't going to step off the moon. And so people people think, or maybe people joke that this is where he, he hesitates, is like, oh, is my grandmother going to kill me because I'm stepping off and I'm not quite sure. Um, so yeah, so that's quite a funny thing that I, I like to, to just... To just add. Now, during this mission, you'll have seen these amazing photographs, uh, which, are, which are beautiful. And there was 122 photos taken just during this mission. And some of them have become really, really iconic. One at this one probably being the most iconic, where you can see everything that's on the moon, every one. You can see the other astronaut in his, in his helmet, you can see the, the module in his helmet, everything. Um, which is really cool. And a cool thing about the spacesuits is that they were designed by women as well. So uh, I like to tell kids in schools this as well. Uh, these are all designed by women and what it was they put out a tender document for people to make them and it was the International Latex Corporation who won that tender and so the, the seamstresses who were making bras at the time they then made these suits because they had they, they had that intricate detail that they could do and, and they, made, they made these suits really really safe and each one will have cost around £80,000 as well. Now the impact was that over 530 million people watched this broadcast from around the world, which is just crazy. Um, and it's estimated that 93% of all televisions across the United States were tuned into this moon landing, which makes me want to know what the rest of the were tuned into. Like, I honestly, I need to find out, that's what I'm going to, I'm literally going to do that this I need to find out what was being shown at the same time. So if any of you find out first, then do tweet and let us know. That could also be homework. <laughs> um, 
Uh, and, it, and, and people said um, that Collins was the loneliest man in the universe, which sounds quite sad. And, and he got like a bit of grief really for being the only person not to watch, not to watch the broadcast. Um, or not to be on the moon. Essentially, there was a, those are the two options. And he was like, you know, I've not, I've not got a bad job. I'm, I'm in space. I'm still part of the mission. And people think he had the, the crappy job, but he didn't. You know, any, I think anyone would kill to have, to have the job that he had. And he had a really important job. And it was almost, the, the astronauts almost didn't get back to the command module yet. Sorry, just to be clear. So Buzz and Neil stepped on the moon and then... Collins was actually just orbiting. Yes. Oh, okay. So so yes. Yeah, sorry. Let me explain. So so you have the moon. Um, you have the um the module that's going around. So you have the 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 the, the command module, which is going around. Someone has to stay in that command module, and then the other two come down in the lunar or lander module, and they land. And then when they're ready to come back, they launch up and they rendezvous with Collins, who's on this other module. So he has to be there to control, so they can control the docking. Oh. Um, and then together they can they can all come back oh, wow. to um, to Earth. So someone had to do that job. And so as he's going around and he's just listening to the comms, everyone else is watching it on TV <laughs> or on the moon, and he's like, "How's it going, guys?" <laughs> <laughs> um, so yeah. So and how long did he orbit for? Uh, so the whole time that they were there, which was, well, I'll tell you in the next slide. Oh, cool. <laughs> uh, but this is quite a nice picture because it apparently it captures everyone in humanity. All of humanity is in is captured in this picture. Well, yeah. Essentially, yeah. <laughs> He's behind the camera. <laughs> so they came back to Earth and. Um, yeah, they almost didn't get back because there was a problem with the circuit breaker. And they had a felt tip pen. It was Buzz had a felt tip pen in his pocket and he was like, What if I just stick this in his felt tip pen <laughs> And they were told to put that down on Earth in mission control. They were like, Do not do that, Buzz, just let us figure it out. And then he was a bit sneaky and he was like, It works! <laughs> and thankfully they were able to get off the moon. Uh, but they they landed, um, so this is how long he will have been orbiting. It was 195 hours, um, 18 minutes and 35 seconds. So it was about 36 minutes over, but that was because this whole problem with the um, with the circuit breaker. Um, and then probably because they were hopping around, jumping around, having a good time. Now, when they came back, they had to go into quarantine for 21 days. But immediately, you see the little boat that goes up to kind of rescue them. So this is, they land in the water in the Pacific Ocean. Um, and the people go up to rescue them and they open the hatch and they have to do like a mini quarantine there and the quarantine was getting a rag and wiping people down <laughs> and then when they finish with that rag guess what it is through the ocean yeah <laughs> which is just mad isn't it how mad is that how mad is that um so very quickly i'm like already nearly used all my time um in fact, yeah, we'll finish there. So, so going back to the moon, I'm going to skip to this slide. Um, there's obviously a lot of talk now about what we're going to do and whether we are going to go back to the moon. So people are saying we're in this new space race. We've got all of this commercial space stuff happening. So you'll have heard of SpaceX and Blue Origin and all of these people, Virgin, Galactic and stuff like that. And so we think that a lot of the astronauts who came back, they thought that the moon was going to be a regular thing and we'd have a base on the moon by now. And it wasn't, it was from like, what, 1972, 73, that we, have, we haven't been back to the moon since then. Uh, no human exploration anymore. There's been robots and things, but not, not humans. I'm going to say robots, not like, like actual, like robotic <laughs> missions, kind of like the Luna 15, not, not real AI robots. Um, and so we've got all this cool stuff and in the UK specifically we have all of these amazing companies and amazing things that are happening we've got UK spaceports we've got one up in Sutherland up in Scotland and we've got one um, down in Cornwall as well and so we're going to be having launches from the UK within the next five to ten years well definitely within the next five years we're going to be having launches and that's because in the UK we make these really amazing small satellites we're one of the best in the world at making small satellites and so rather than shipping them over to America or Russia or France or wherever we're going to start launching them from the UK which is really cool and so I thought I'd give that a mention but 